The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. There is a law of confession. Every time you can predict what's going to happen. Every time. Now, what has happened? We've not made the connection between what we say and what we get in this life or what we have. Now, you can speak life or you can speak what? Death. We think our words are just sound. We think our words are just noise. They're not. They're spirit. Your spirit is a bag that holds words. And whatever words are in there, when you come under attack, that's what comes out. So demons are waiting on your mouth. They are perched, waiting on your conversation. Their job is to get you to loose your tongue. It's to get you to say something that God didn't say. So every belief in me that God was not the author of, he's got plans to rid it out. If you can fix your confession in line with the Word of God, all your needs will be met. The law of the physical or natural laws, gravity, and so forth and so on, are governed by a more powerful spiritual law. When God spoke this universe, it's staying right there where God spoke it because His Word is there making it stay right where He said it. You got it? Let's go to John chapter 6, please. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that what? Quickeneth. The flesh, what? Profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are what? Spirit. Keep going. And they are what? Life. Now, what we've thought is that words are just noise, sound, wrong. That's what you hear with your natural ears. But words are spirit. That's why when people speak certain words to you, they can go down into the belly. And that's why they, 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 they don't deceive, they, they live. And you keep hearing them words. Because the words, when you speak them, you give life to them. Now you can speak life or you can speak what? Death. But they're not just noise. So what we thought is words were just noise. Well, I'm dying to go. I said, well, don't say that. Well, that ain't going to hurt nothing. See, because you think it's just noise. But their spirit, and they're going out to do things. Now, are, are you with me so far here? Now, wait till we get to James. You're going to really see this. It's going to pop out to you, but I want to work you over in here first. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Job chapter 38. Now, I'm just, it's just a couple of things that I just want to lay this, this foundation real good in you. Job chapter 38. Job chapter 38. Lord, have mercy. Look at verse 33. Knoweth thou, this is God talking to Job now, knoweth thou the ordinances of heaven? Can thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? Now, wait a minute. I want to translate it for you in the Living Bible. Do you know the laws of the universe and how the heavens influence the earth? Do you know the law? Do you know spiritual law and how spiritual law affects natural laws? Do you know? And a lot of times we put it on God. You know, God's my problem. God's not your problem. He said death and life are in the power of your tongue. Are you following what I'm saying? And, and look what it says. Come on, I'm taking my Psalms chapter 141. Psalms chapter 141. Look at verse 3. Set a watch, O Lord, before my what? 
mouth, keep going, and keep the door of my lips. My goodness, he called your lips a door. Now, this is an Old Testament request. God is not going to keep your lips. What God is going to do is he's going to show you how to keep your lips. Now, he did things in them for the Old Testament because they weren't redeemed. But in the New Testament, that's gone away. You're going to have to keep your mouth. One more place. Let's go to Psalms chapter 39, please. Psalms chapter 39, verse 1. I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth, what? With a bridle, keep going, while the wicked is where? Before me. So who is the wicked, you think? Satan or demons? So demons are waiting on your mouth. They are perched, waiting on your conversation. Because death and life, the demons know, is not in the power of God. It's not in the power of Satan. They know it's in your power. And let me tell you, folks, they come and they try to distract you. They try to, to give you a situation where you would speak the wrong thing. Come on, come on over to Proverbs chapter 30 real quick. They try to give you and paint a picture just as bad as they can paint it because their job is to get you to loose your tongue and to get you to say something that God didn't say. And what you're going to do is you're going to have to bridle them lips of yours. Come on, that tongue. Look what it says in Proverbs chapter 30. If you have it, say praise the Lord. Look at verse 32. If thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, or if thou hast thought what? Evil. What are you going to do to your mouth? You're going to put a gag on your mouth because the enemy comes to shoot a thought in your mind and get you to speak it. And God is not going to keep it. You're going to have to keep it. He said, Paul, Paul teaches in Ephesians chapter 4, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth, but that which is good to the edifying, that it may give grace to the hearers. God wants you to speak words that will build up things, not tear them down. Now, let's go to Job real quick, and let's go to Job. Come on now. We're going to get your mouth in order. Let's go to Job chapter uh, 6, please. How many of you know Job had a battle with the devil? And the devil was trying to wipe Job out. And he got into Job's life. And you know people say, well, the Lord was testing Job. All oh, that kind of foolishness. And that ain't what he was doing at all. The Bible said, Job said, the thing that I feared most has come upon me. Fear was something that came into Job's life that started a sequence of activity. But I want to show you something, because look what it says in Job chapter 6 and verse 23. Oh, deliver me from the enemy's hand. This is Job talking now to God. Or redeem me from the hand of the who? Mighty. Verse 24, teach me and I will do what? Hold my tongue, keep going, and cause me to understand where I have erred. Job's mouth got him in trouble. Now, why am I telling you that? Oh, we've had books on positive thinking. And we said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. But I want you to see something here. Positive thinking alone ain't going to deliver you. It ain't going to deliver you. Why? Because words have authority. Thank God for the positive thinking, but that's because that's bringing 
bringing you a little ways on, but positive thinking just has you to think positive while the boat's going down. <laughs> you drown in glue, glue, glue. Hey, hey, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Oh, yeah, keep positive thinking about it. <laughs> Positive thinking alone will not deliver you. It will not change your circumstances. It will change you. It's what you say out of your mouth. Now here is Jesus. A man named Jairus was walking with him. Here he was, they were walking together. Jairus had gotten Jesus. Here's what Jairus said. Come to my house. My daughter is almost dead. And I want you to lay your hands on her because if you lay your hands on her, she's going to be healed. If you lay your hands on her, she's going to be healed. So now what happens is Jairus is walking with Jesus. He said, come to the house. If you lay your hands on my daughter, she's going to be healed. Now, she's close to death. Jesus starts walking with her. So she comes and she stops Jesus because she's touching the hem of his garment. And when she touched the hem of his garment, he stops. Then she then testified. Now, when I have testi testimonies in here some nights, I don't let them hold a mic. <laughs> Do you know why? Because they seem to go on and on. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about Jay Iris. Now, Jay Iris, come on. You know, this woman busy testifying. Yeah, and I, the Bible says she told him all the truth. <laughs> So, now understand, Jairus now is thinking about his daughter almost dead when he left the house. But he made a confession that if you lay your hands on her, she'll be healed. Man of God went with her. Now watch this. Then she, what, Jesus told the woman, daughter, thy faith has made you whole. Go in peace. Be whole to thy plague. All right. Now, that was that. Here come the runners from Jairus' house. Don't trouble the master any longer. Your daughter is dead. What did Jesus do? Ha! Ha! Shh! 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 Don't say nothing. See, there is something called a vocabulary of silence. After you have made your confession, shut your mouth. Now, this woman, Jer then Jesus goes to her house. Oh, Jairus' house, pardon me. And gets to the house, and they in there tumulting. Tumult means they're crying and weeping and wailing because the daughter was 12 years old and normally what they do is get in the funeral and say, the Lord gave and now the Lord has taken away, plucked up like a little flower. That's a lie. You know that's a lie because Jesus raised up. If, if the Lord, if God killed her and wanted her dead, why would Jesus raise her up? So you got to get all that crazy, foreign, stinking thinking out of your mind and out of your mouth. All right, now watch what he said then. He walked in the door, opened the door, and this is what he said. Your daughter is not dead. She's just asleep. Now, what did that do? He wasn't trying to impress these people. He was activating spiritual law. Now, I'm saying when you're going through something, the devil will send people your way. 
to change your mouth. Watch this. Or in some cases, don't let you say nothing. Now, you're going to have to confess something at some point. Some people think they're just quiet, everything will work out all right. Uh-uh, 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 honey. You got to say something at some point. And that enemy will try to come and make things look bad and make you what we call in the holiness church, take down. He'll try to make you back up on your confession or neutralize that rascal. I remember when we were confessing, I'm confessing this mall. I'm telling you, we're waiting on the money. The money hadn't come. The lawyer's calling me. Hey, Pastor, where is the money? I said, well, you know, I, I believe I received, believe you received. What is that? We need the money. The developers want the money. I said, man. So now I'm going to the barber shop just to get a haircut. Thought, thought I could get some peace. I went down to the barber shop. One of them cutting hair. Reverend, I heard you. Y'all going to buy that mall up there and start winking at the other, other barbers and so forth. <laughs> I said, yeah. Now, at that time, I needed to say, wait a minute. I already got it. <laughs> man, look at look here, man. Y'all, y'all. Yeah. But I start backing up. Now, I got to confess now. I start backing up because I caught it considering whether they would understand it. Come on, you, you, you all ain't doing me right. See, I can't consider whether some heathen will understand what I'm going to say. Come on now. See, the Bible said, let God be true. say what God said in the face of death. I got to say she shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. I ain't trying to impress them. I'm trying to put spiritual law into motion. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. And what am I doing with this series? I want to make it so that your words have value. That every word that you speak, you're going to measure that against the Word of God. Now, you got to get around like precious faith and get yourself together because it's always easy to say it up in here. Well, hallelujah, I'm a king. I'm, I'm dead. Oh, hallelujah. But wait till you go out there and the devil put some pressure on you. Come on now and, and, put, and put professionals in your environment. I'm talking about folk with degrees on top of degrees. You're going to have to be willing to see yourself in the future. Hallelujah. I'm talking to all of us now. Now, the reason why that hadn't happened, one, is because we haven't had the word in our heart. Because you can't kind of come, something come out of your mouth that ain't in your heart when the pressure comes off. So we got to first put it in your heart. Come on now. But then give you such confidence in the value or the weight of your words till you know if you say it, it's going to come to pass. Verse chapter, Psalm chapter 38 and verse 2, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy, heaven, for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy what? A word. Come on above all thy name. This is talking about Jesus. You know what he did? He magnified his word above his name. Let me tell you what that means. That means that if he ever speaks something, 
he surrenders to it. He is under the authority of whatever he spoke that you won't ever get him to change. If he promised you something, he completely gives himself to it. Are you following what I'm saying here? Now, what am I saying? We're going to take this and build inside of you an understanding of confession. There are four major confessions that predominantly in the New Testament. We'll go through those next time. And we'll show you where yours are. Yours come into a place where you're confessing God's promise. You're confessing God's word concerning your own life and your own deliverance or your own prosperity or your inheritance. And when you start confessing that, that word is called in the Greek homologio. And homologio, homo means the same. And logio has to do with a word or has to do with what you say. So now we're going to say what God says. Now we're not going to care how it looks. Come on now. Because see, we're not looking for a path. We're going to cut a path. Oh, you got what I'm saying? We're going to cut a path. All right, now say this with me. Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, I cancel cancel every negative word word that I've spoken, spoken, every word that I've released released, that's been against your will will and your plan for my life life and the lives of others. I ask you to forgive me for it. I cancel it now now. in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Now, Lord, Lord, from this day, day, give me understanding. Give me me conviction conviction from the Holy Ghost Ghost when I go crosswise crosswise to to the Word of God. to say what you said said said. in every situation. situation. Help me be bold. bold. Help me to be strong. strong. You said said, whoever the sun sets free free is free indeed. indeed. Now, Now, from this day forward, forward, my words words are not only going to make me free, But whoever I speak those words over, they shall be free indeed. I thank you for it. From this day forward, I shall win and never lose. I shall be on top and never under the bottom. I'm the head and not the tail. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. said to me, I said something, and my wife said to me, now it was something went crosswise the Word of God. It wasn't the Word of God, because I was mad. <laughs> see? See, that could happen to old Bill. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm being transparent now. So what happened? I, I said something, and she said to me, she said to me, Well, sweetheart, if that's what you want, I agree with you. (laughs) I stepped back. I said, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa now. You going to use my stuff on me? (laughs) Check it out. You need somebody around you that's going to call you to task. When you speak something God didn't say, you're going to need somebody to say, what is that? What are you saying? Uh Uh-uh, that ain't going to... You follow what I'm saying? Don't get mad at them. Get thank God for them because you are on your way to the promised land.
Well, I trust that you are blessed by this powerful teaching. It's called the Law of Confession. Now, today's message is part of a three-disc series. Now, here's a very important point to remember. Whatever's in your heart is going to eventually come out of your mouth, especially when the pressure's on. You know, remember the three Hebrews when they were in the fiery furnace and they said, hey, the God that we serve, will He will deliver us? Notice, the pressure. And once that pressure is on you, whatever is in your heart comes right out of your mouth. So what do you want to do? Make sure you put the right thing in your heart. Praise God, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak, and what you confess, you will eventually possess. Praise the Lord. Well, the announcer is going to give you important information on how you can order this powerful set of teachings on the law of confession. I'll be right back. There is a law of confession. Every time you can predict what's going to happen. Every time. Now, what has happened? We've not made the connection between what we say and what we get in this life or what we have. Now, you can speak life or you can speak what? Death. We think our words are just sound. We think our words are just noise. They're not. They're spirit. Your spirit is a bag that holds words. And whatever words are in there, when you come under attack, that's what comes out. So demons are waiting on your mouth. They are perched, waiting on your conversation. Their job is to get you to loose your tongue and to get you to say something that God didn't say. So every belief in me that God was not the author of, he's got plans to rid it out. If you can fix your confession in line with the Word of God, all your needs will be met. Value the power that is released through your words in Pastor Winston's barrier-breaking three-disc series, The Law of Confession. To order on CD or DVD by bank card at 1-800-711-9327 or online at billwinston.org. Govern your entire life when you make the connection between what you say and what you have in The Law of Confession. Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now, this is a most profound scripture because what he's saying here is that we need to value our words. We need to make sure that the words we speak are the things we want in our lives. And I tell you, go back in scripture and you'll see when this woman's son had died, she went to find a prophet and and he said, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? She said, all is well. Now the child was graveyard dead. But see, that's the way she turned death into life. She spoke life over her situation. The same thing goes for you. I don't care how it looks, speak God's word. Praise God. This is Bill Winston. Until next time, we love you and keep walking by faith. The mission of Bill Winston Ministries is to preach the gospel of the kingdom throughout the world. This broadcast has been made available to you through the faithful support of Bill Winston Ministry partners and friends. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers.